three, two, one. Log Talk Radio. You're listening to content developed by the GoPro Radio Network, the fastest growing network in the galaxy. GoPro Radio Network. Listen to the voices in your head. Are you ready for this? Yeah. Good evening, good evening, good evening. It's Wednesday, September the 7th, 2016, and welcome to the BCS Experience. History, arts, culture, and politics in review and discussion. I'm Byron C. Saunders, your host with the most. The BCS Experience takes a look at our rich history, African American history. We're going to share with you some known and unknown historical facts and information from the past and connect the dots on how they have impacted on our present day events and how they will definitely shape our future as African Americans in this country and around the world. The BCS Experience, History, Arts, Culture, Politics, in Review and Discussion. This is Internet Radio and will be aired live every Wednesday from 5 to 6 p.m from the studios of the Iron Metropolis Images on the GoPro Radio Network. You see, I am really excited about this opportunity to talk to you all across the country and around the globe. I want you to tune in every week on your computer or your phone, and I want you to become a loyal listener, and I personally invite you to lend your voices to this radio talk show to express your opinions on my weekly topics. This is Social Network Radio at its finest. Now, here's the number for you to call in to be a part of tonight's discussion. Call 347-884-9839. Once again, that number to call is 347-884-9839. All right, this week's topic. I'm into this history thing. History, history, and yes, even more history. This is a celebration of known and unknown heroes and, yes, sheroes that need to be recognized for their amazing contributions. Wow. Hey, listen, my show is the new Underground Railroad Express. Next stop is your neighborhood. All aboard to freedom and to freedom land. All right, we're going to jump right into the history pool. I got so much to share with you. And... We'll talk about what happened last week's show a little bit later, but let's jump into the history. All right, the date. It's a Saturday. It's September the 1st, the year 1753, okay? Hold on, on this date in 1753, the first black book of poetry written by a black woman was published in America. See, poems on various subjects, religious and moral, by Phyllis Wheatley, was published at that time. Now, when her owner, the Wheatley, saw her writing on a wall with chalk, rather than punish her, the Wheatleys encouraged her to learn. Their daughter tutored her in reading and writing. Now, Wheatley, Phyllis Wheatley, also studied English, literature, Latin, and the Bible. But what she did best was to write poetry. Her first poem was published in the Newport Mercury newspaper in 1767. Six years later, in the service of the Wheatley family, Phyllis Wheatley sailed to London, where she had hoped to meet Selina Hastings, the Countess of Huntington. While they were not able to meet in person, her Countess helped Wheatley publish a volume of her poetry in 1773. Phyllis Wheatley, who would have thought? Writing poetry, publishing her work in America. Wow. 
See there? You thought it was way down the road. But see, we owe our, our thirst for knowledge and for wanting to learn through sheroes like Phyllis Wheatley. All right, I want to hear from you. Let's connect the dots and make sense out of it all. Let's talk. Call me, 347-884-9839. All right. Tonight, I have some very special, distinguished, featured call-in guests joining us and joining us here in the GoPro studio from all around the globe and around the world. They are you, my listening audience, with another opportunity to appreciate our rich cultural history and learn how it actually impacts on our lives today. All right, this is the story on tonight's show. It's history, history, history. This is the BCS Experience. Now, I want to hear from you. You can call me. I want to know if you really know some of this history that I'm sharing with you. So let's connect some of these dots and make sense out of it all. Let's talk. Call me, 347-884-9839. All right, we're going to jump right back into the history line. The date, it's a Wednesday. It's August the 31st. The year is 1842. You see, Josephine St. Pierre Ruffin, a black journalist and civil rights leader was born on this date in 1842. Now Ruffin was born into one of Boston's leading black families and in 1858 at the age of 15 she became the wife of George Lewis Ruffin, the first African American to graduate from Harvard Law School. That's right, the first African American to graduate from Harvard Law School. And during the Civil War, Ruffin was involved in various civil rights causes, charity work, and the women's suffrage movement. In 1879, she established the Boston Kansas Relief Association, a charity organization that provided food and clothing to black Bostonians who were migrating to Kansas. Interesting. Her philanthropic work brought her in contact with many eminent white and black leaders and her close friends included William Lloyd Garrison, Susan B. Anthony, Elizabeth Caddy Strat Statton, and Booker T. Washington. From 1890 to 1897, Ruffin served as the editor and publisher of Women's Era. This was the first newspaper published by and for African American women. It was used to highlight the achievements of African-American women and a champion black women's rights. Wow. Back in the 1800s, folks, I'm telling you. The 1894, she organized the Women's Era Club, an advocacy group for black women and the help of her daughter, Florida Ridley and Maria Baldwin, a Boston school principal. Ruffin died on March the 13th 1924. You see, we got many heroes and sheroes that you've never heard about in your history books. That's why the BCS experience is critically important right here on the GoPro Radio, the fastest growing network in the galaxy. All right, I got a telephone caller already, so let's find out who's on the line with us this evening on the BCS experience. Welcome to the BCS experience, and who might you be? Hello, you're on the air. I'm sorry, who is again? Say again. Verlene Edge. Verlene Edge. Oh my goodness. Verlene Edge, the Arms of Love Outreach Community Network. Now, Verlene and I have known each other, oh, way back in the 20th century somewhere. Verlene, welcome first time to the BCS experience. And for those of you who don't know, I was trying to get Verlene to be on my, my featured call in guest today, but she's here. Reason being is because the Arms of Love Outreach Community uh, Incorporated is having its back to school event this Saturday. Vera Lane, let's talk a little bit about it because I was going to hold off to the end of the show to let people know about uh, the Arms of Love AOL Community Outreach Program. How old is this program? I'm on your board of directors there, so let's talk about the beginning. Let's talk about. Seven years old? Yes, seven years old. Oh, my goodness. It doesn't seem that like that. So why did you start this program, Verlaine? Um, I started the program because I've noticed that there are a lot of people in the community 
who need assistance, but their pride will not allow them to ask for it. Yes. So we decided to go and see how we can help the community. And what we do is we link the existing organizations with the people in the community yeah. so that we can serve them with pride so that they don't have to feel as if they're any less than the other people to, um, to have an op- opportunity to get things like health care, yes. child safety kits, yes. uh, school supplies. Yes. Just something, we just wanted to give a sense of family. Right. We are the right. village and we wanted to make sure that everyone knows that. That's right. The African proverb, it takes a village to raise a child. Well, it takes a village to raise a village, folks. These are the village share, shareholders and stakeholders. And, and how, many, how many members do we have, Verle, on our board? We have about 10 members on our board, and we're still looking for more because we have a greater work to do, but we yes. just don't have enough hands. I, I know that's right. Now, let's talk a bit about some of the people who are on the board because I want to make sure they get their shout out too. You got some really powerful workers behind you. Uh, so tell us who's who's who in the lineup of the of the board members. President, who's the president? Well, I'm the president. Yes. And CEO. Okay, there you go. See you at the top of the leaderboard. <laughs> I like that. And <laughs> we start off with number one. Okay. All right. Yes, now, who's sure. second? Who's second in charge behind your your leadership? Well, I have a. We're actually in the process of changing our leadership, okay. and right now. We have Sister Candace Johnson, who's serving as the board of directors, the yes. chair of the board of directors. Yes. We have Sister Glenda um, Seaborn, who's yes. the vice um, chair. Okay. And we have um, just several members that do not probably would not want to be um, advertised at this time, but we do have Donette Cannon, who's our treasurer. Yes. We have we're basically reaching out to people that are out of state because we're trying to go international not only national but we're doing what we're doing international right um we we have someone in boston who's working nice. with us great so we're just kind of like filtering out to the communities that need help and in addition to having a fine board of directors who are really hard workers because i mean seven years i've been working with this group folks and i can honestly tell you this is just not a group that's that gets together and just sits around and talk and you know act sedity. No, we roll up our sleeves. We get down on the ground with the people. This is a spiritually based group. We're Christians showing our Christian uh, outreach to our communities in South Jamaica and Queens, uh, New York City. And as you can hear from Vera Lane, she's expanding globally. She's expanding to the other parts of the country. Where in our community, you, you know the problems that exist. We got homelessness. We got kids who are trying to get ready to go back to school uh, and need books and supplies, shoes. You know, I mean, there's a, there's a lot that we need in our community. And it's not going to come from the government. It's going to come from us. We got to protect our community. And this organization does a very fine job. So this Saturday, this is the 7th. A flyer. I, I have a flyer that we're showing as well uh, okay. of the event. So it's going to right. be at this South Jamaica Queens Library. And where's that located? Right. That's uh, 10841 mm-hmm. Garabu Boulevard yes. in Jamaica Queens. And from what time and to what time? The, it's going to be from 12 to 3. Uh, yes. 
And at this event, we will have the healthcare facilities out. So if there's anyone who wants more information regarding healthcare, we'll have them out. We'll have banking so children can enroll in uh, children, open up children's savings account. Yes. We will have um, the kids kits to give the children for the parents to identify them with their name and address Very important. and their, That's um, right. fingerprint. Uh, we will have several different things. Also, we're trying to do what well, the, the library is coordinating yes. is back to school fashion show so we can see all the uniforms. Oh, my goodness. They're going to look good. Wearing. Yes, indeed. Yeah, we'll have a, have a face painter. We'll have blueness. We have several different surprise elements to this particular one because we're moving outside of the church yes. and we're moving actually into the community okay. so that we can reach those people that will never come into the church. Bear Lane, I got to take a break here. Can you stay with me for some time? Sure. I, yeah, because I mean, I'll keep you, I want to do my history thing, but we're going to intersperse <laughs> it with uh, Arms of Love Outreach. I got to take this break sure. here. Stay with come us, on. folks. You're listening to the BCS Experience on GoPro Radio. Yeah. We'll be right back after these very important messages from GoPro Radio. You're listening to content developed by the GoPro Radio Network, the fastest growing network in the galaxy. GoPro Radio Network. Listen to the voices in your head. We are an amazing people. Rooted in Africa, the cradle of human civilization. Descendant of the awesome men and women who made a way out of no way. People steeped in the values of truth, justice, respect, harmony, balance, reciprocity, and order. But 400 years of enslavement, Jim Crow, and racism, fueled by the lie of black inferiority, have taken their toll. The result? Too much pain. Too much hurt. Too much loss. We owe our ancestors, ourselves, and our children so much more than this. Join the movement for emotional emancipation, healing, and wellness for black people. Go to communityhealingnet.org and take the pledge to defy the lie and embrace the truth. That's communityhealingnet.org. Our children and our ancestors are waiting. You're listening to content developed by the GoPro Radio Network, the fastest growing network in the galaxy. GoPro Radio Network. Listen to the voices in your head. All right, already. We're back. Are you ready for this? I am so ready for this. Are you ready for this? Hey, you're listening to the BCS Experience. We're live right now on GoProRadio.com. Tune in. You want to talk to me, 347-884-9839. I have a very special guest on this evening, Verlene Edge. She's the president, CEO of Arms of Love Outreach, Community Outreach Program. I mean, the, folks, this is a program that's helping our community. Seven years we've been doing this in South Jamaica, and it's expanding. And this coming Saturday, as I we have a flyer, which I want to make sure people get a chance to see, is the uh, seventh anniversary of our wellness back to school event. Batteries not included, but what is included are free book bags filled with the elements and all that a child needs to get a, a great start for the school year 2016. And folks, you know how hard it is. If you're not getting in school and you're not, you don't have the latest in terms of just book bags, you know, kids will make fun of you. It's a form of bullying, but it's not necessary. And if you don't have those elements and things to make your child's first day a good one, talk to us, call us. Vera Lane, what's the number where people can call who want to know about how they can get access to the free um, school um, uh, book bags and, and, and pencils and paper and ID. What's the number to call? 646-770-2382. Okay, 646-770. And, and what's the last point? 2386. 2386. Yes, go. 2382. Let's say that one more time. 646 uh-huh 
770. Yes. 2382. Okay, and where's the event going to be held, Verlaine? It's going to be held at the South Jamaica Queens Public Library at 10841 Garabua Boulevard in Jamaica, New York. Okay, and that's this Saturday, September the 10th, from 12 noon to 3 p.m. Be there yeah. or be square, okay, as they <laughs> say. And, we, and not only book bags filled with all the uh, child needs to get to, off to the first day of school in the right way. You're going to have food, free food. You got dance. Yes. You got a choir mm -hmm. that's singing. We give them information. See, Fear Lane, my show is the new Underground Railroad Express. And when we teach our kids about the Underground Railroad, they need to know it just wasn't stopped back then. It's ongoing today. You go to these places to pick up the advice that you need to get to freedom and to get to freedom land. We have the new Underground Railroad Express. That's part of our ancestry and our culture. We got to teach them the right way. Vera Lane, I got some more history I'm going to share with you. Stay with me because I want you to be able to take this to the children as well. Okay. The date, check this out. The date is a Thursday. It's September the 3rd, the year is 1846. You see on this date, in 1846, the American Missionary Association, AMA, was founded by Samuel Cornish. Now the AMA trained and educated slaves. It was the first such organization to teach Southern slaves in a credible and organized manner. The AMA uh, was both a missionary and an abolitionist society focusing more on education to freed slaves and after the start of the Civil War. They opened their first school on the grounds of the Chesapeake Female College across the Hampton River in Virginia on September the 17th, 1861. Now in just a few years the AMA opened schools in North Carolina, Moorhead, Roanoke, I Roanoke Island and Beaufort. By 1868, the AMA had over 500 teacher and missionaries throughout the South and near the border states. Their teachers often lived and worked with black families, yet failed to recognize and encourage the richness of African American culture. You see the AMA, most positive contribution that has stood the test of time has been the many black colleges and university it helped establish. The list includes Fisk University, Brea College, Atlanta University, Talladega College, Le Moyne Institute, and Strait University, which is now known as Dillard University in New Orleans. You see, Vera Lane, our community for, has a tradition of giving back, working for the best in our community, giving them education. And this was done free of charge. We gathered our elders together, brought them together to start these schools. That's what AOL is doing. You see, you're walking in the tradition of the, our ancestors, heroes and sheroes, who taught us how to succeed at making sure our children got the best. I'm so proud of Arms of Love uh, Outreach Community and as a board member. And have, I mean, I, it fills my heart when I see all the kids coming and really uh, getting a chance to start their school year on equal, equal pair with everybody, or their peers, coming with the new book bags, looking good, getting haircuts, getting their, getting their hair done. And this is what we do. Now, Vera Lane, we just don't do what, back to school. What other kind of events do we do at AOL? Well, that's what I was going to mention. <laughs> All right. Um, we, have a big, we have a big event on Christmas. Yes. Which is dedicated to literacy. Yes. And we have, um, we give away Christmas toys. Mm -hmm. We want to get linked with the um, health facilities. Yes. And the safety um, police department yes. in order to provide our children with those type of things that they might need. I guess midway during the school. Yes. Getting, keeping them on track. That's right. Uh, we also do historical trips. Mm -hmm. such as the Blacks and Wax. We okay. help our children go to different events, different activities. We kind of 
help them to see their visions and their dreams. Yes. With the parents, like we took a group to Disney. Okay. Um, right. Because the parents and some children don't see that this is reachable for them. Yes. So we did a fundraiser. We raised funds to help them go to Disney. We do several outreach organization things. <laughs> I'll just say things and events and activities. Yes, we do. And I just wanted to mention that the um, No Batteries Necessary. Yes. Is actually our initiative to the child obesity. Wow. And See? that's why we have it to keep them moving. That's so right. on that day, we let them do all of the old school games with the running and the jumping and the right, balls and right. you know, rope and all of that. Yes. Something to keep them moving. Yes. So that they're not sitting. We have no electrical outlets, no games, none of that. <laughs> no PlayStation, um, right, right. Computer games, right. right. Okay. No PlayStation, no <laughs> Wii, none of that. You know? Yes, yes. So it's a way to let them know that they are their own energy. That's right. To help them keep themselves moving. As as I once remember the in the uh, the movie Miracle on 34th Street, there's a line in there, Vera Lane, that goes like this. Santa Claus says, you know what the you know what the biggest best nation is it's the imagination and that's the thing that Correct. we see we, we <laughs> I, I, my playstation you know what the first playstation was the kitchen mm -hmm. we sat down in that <laughs> kitchen and you know your mama and your grandmother gave you a pot and some pans <laughs> and some beans to play mm -hmm. with you know and mm -hmm. that's how we learn mm -hmm. And we could yeah, go back to yeah. the old school things. It was important to learn those things. We learned how to cook. We learned survival skills. You see, the play station that we talk about is the Underground Railroad. That's the right. station where we get our information to succeed and survive in this really cruel world that we're in. It doesn't have to be a struggle, but if you have the right information and the right guidance from your elders, mm -hmm. you will succeed. We have succeeded. Mm -hmm. I mean, these people that I just talked about in history, these people overcame where they had no electricity, you know? They right. were barely freed off the plantation. We got folks walking mm -hmm. around on the plantation. They don't even know they're slaves, really. <laughs> anyway, I know, that's right. Now, check this out. Check this next <laughs> guy out. Right. This next guy out is a Queens person, okay? No, mm -hmm. we, I got history for you right there in Queens, people. <laughs> now, yeah. the date, it's... It's September the 4th. The year is 1848. Lewis Howard Latimer was born on this date in 1848. He was an African-American inventor and an innovator in the electric lighting industry. You see, as a boy, Latimer worked in his father's barbershop in Chelsea, Massachusetts. He joined the Union Navy during the Civil War and after an honorable discharge, in 1865, he found work with a firm of patent lawyers. Now, although Latimer was hired as an office boy, he cultivated drafting skills in his spare time until he was qualified for blueprint work. Latimer brainstormed his own work, patenting in 1874 a pivot bottom for water closets on trains. His high caliber draftsmanship impressed Alexander Graham Bell, whose 1876 telephone blueprints were drawn by Lewis Howard Latimer. Not, think about this. You've seen the movie, Al Don Amici. He's out there calling for help about his telephone. Well, when he's calling for help, you see a white guy on the other end. Uh-uh. False story, people. <laughs> It was Lewis Howard Latimer. Alexander Graham Bell couldn't draw worth a plum nickel. He had a black guy draw the, as his drafting engineer, draw the images to, of the Lewis, of the uh, Alexander Graham telephone and got the patent because of his drawings. I bet y'all didn't know that. All right, now keep, check this out. In 1880, Latimer went to work for the inventor Hiram Maxim who ran the United States Electric Lighting Company in Bridgeport, Connecticut, and was one of Thomas Edison's prime competitors in the institutionalization of electric light. You see, under Maxim, Latimer supervised the installation of electric light in New York, Philadelphia, London, and Montreal. He also developed other inventions of his own, co-patenting an electric lamp with Joseph B. Nichols in 1881, and most important, 
refining light bulb technology in 1882. In 1884, he was invited to work for Maxim's arch rival, Thomas Alva Edison in New York. An expert electrical engineer, Latimer's work for Edison was critical for the following reasons. His thorough knowledge of electric, lighting, and power guided Edison through the process of filling patent forms properly at the United States Patent Office, protecting the company from infringements of his inventions. Latimer was also in charge of the company uh, of, of, he was also in charge of the company library, collecting information from around the world, translating data in French and German to protect the company from European challenges. And shown here is Latimer's incandescent light fixture. Now, this was, pat this was a, a special patent that's specific to Louis Latimer's genius that he got on December 23rd, 1884. He became Edison's patent investigator and expert witness in cases against persons trying to benefit from Edison's inventions without legal permission. Edison encouraged Latimer to write the book Incandescent Electric Lighting, a practical description of the Edison system. See, in, in, in layman's term, Veerling, it wasn't Thomas Edison who invented the perfect light bulb because Thomas Edison's light bulb was a wet bamboo filament <laughs> and it burned out yeah. quickly. But it was Lewis Howard Latimer, an African-American, who created the carbon filament for the light bulb. Imagine mm -hmm. that. Who do we owe mm -hmm. our... Who do we owe an homage to for that lighting the world? Lewis Howard Latimer. Oh, my gosh. And it was an extremely... <laughs> see, see, they don't teach you that in school. They'll tell you about Thomas Edison. Right. They'll tell you about Con mm -hmm. Edison. But they won't mention the name Lewis Howard Latimer. Anyway, mm -hmm. published in 1890, it was extremely popular as it explained how an incandescent lamp produces light in an easy-to-understand manner. On February the 11th, 1918, Latimer became one of the 28 charter members of the Edison Pioneers, the only African American in this prestigious, highly selective group. After leaving Edison, Latimer worked for a patent consultant firm until 1922, when failing eyesight caused an end to his career. His health began to fail following the death of his beloved wife, Mary Wilson Latimer in 1924 to cheer and encourage him to carry on his children two daughters and a book of his poems printed in 1925 in honor of his 77th birthday the poems are beautifully sensitive and com complement latimer's designation as a renaissance man who painted played the flute wrote poetry and plays Lewis Howard Latimer settled in Flushing, New York, and lived there until his death in 1928. He was an active member of the local uh, community, teaching English and drafting to immigrants at the Henry Street Settlement in 1906. And in 1968, Latimer was posthumously honored by his, the borough of Brooklyn when a public school was named after him. Now, I got to take a break, but I got to tell you, when I come back, I'm going to tell you the rest of the story, as Paul Harvey would say. So don't go away. Come on back to the BCS Experience on GoPro Radio. You're listening to content developed by the GoPro Radio Network, the fastest growing network in the galaxy. GoPro Radio Network. Listen to the voices in your head. What if you can have an entire team of skilled professionals to help your business grow? Admin, accounts, marketing, and more, but only pay for the exact amount of support you need at virtually the same cost you'd pay for one full-time employee. With virtual professions, you can. One contact, one number gets you a team of virtual professionals for exactly what your business needs. It's a one triple eight three one five VPRO. That's one eight eight eight. 
315-8776 or online at www.virtualprofessions.net. Virtual Professions Incorporated, because you mean business. You're listening to content developed by the GoPro Radio Network, the fastest growing network in the galaxy. GoPro Radio Network, listen to the voices in your head. All right, all ready. Are you ready for this? Yes, I am. Are you ready for this? All right, we're on the BCS Experience. Vera Lane, Edge, CEO, President of Arms of Love Outreach Community, program this coming Saturday, wellness, um, uh, back to school event. This is the seventh anniversary for giving back to the community and making sure our children have the right tools to go back to school with good brand new book bags filled with pencils, paper, erasers, things that they need to make get off to a great start in school. So anyway, Verlaine, we were talking about Lewis Latimer. Now, here's, some, yeah. here's where we, the intersection connects. Lewis Howard Latimer. As you well know, I sat on the, I was the executive director for the Queens Historical Society for eight years. I was preserving the history of Queens, New York City, and it's 2.5 million people, headquartered at the Kingsland Homestead in downtown Flushing. In fact, that's when we first met because you were working with Girl Scouts USA at that time. So was my sister. And so that's how we, Correct. that's how far back we go, people. Okay. So this is not just a new acquaintance. So it got started back then. Well, at that time, I sat on the board of advisors of directors for the Lewis, How Lewis Howard Latimer Foundation. I helped to move his house to its current location. I helped to raise funds to help restore his house, which is in downtown Flushing, right in front of the Lewis Latimer apartment complex. Just a move, you would hardly know this person was retired. Lewis Howard Latimer, a Renaissance man, right here. It's a Queen's story, my people. See, we got this is a connecting the dots. This is how we got to do this, Bill Lane. All right, I got some more history I'm gonna share with you because I really want to get through this and then come back to Arms of Love so we can tell people how they're gonna get their kids started on the right foot this year 2016 all right okay you got it all right here did, here's some story that you may not know all right the date it's a saturday it's september the first the year is 1883 anita bush was born on this date in 1883 now she was an african-american dancer actress and theatrical administrator born in new york anita bush was introduced to the world of theater by her father, a tailor, whose clients included many New York actors and performers. And at the age of 16, Anita joined the Williams and Walker Company as a dancer, and in 1913, determined uh, that blacks should perform serious dramatic works, she formed the Anita Bush Players of Harlem the first professional black dramatic non-musical theater ensemble in the United States. Now this group later became the Lafayette Players. The company survived until January 23rd, 1932, but it is in its 17 years, it was responsible for training over 300 black performers and including serious theater to many cities across the country. The Anita Bush Players opened at the Lincoln Theater in New York City on November the 15th, 1915 with The Girl at the Fort. Its run was short, but successful. And on December 27th of that year, the players transferred to the larger Lafayette Theater where they became the Lafayette Players. Bush left the group in 1920 and went on to co-star in The Crimson Skull. 
1921, the first all-black Western movie. She died in February 1974. Now, did you know that about that woman, Fairlane? No, I did not. See? And you got a family that's, that is talented. Oh, my God. Folks, now she, Fairlane is very modest. Candace <laughs> and Donette. They can sing, y'all. Okay, I mean, sing like you, like you know, good gospel and good spirituals and good R and B. These ladies can sing. Okay, so <laughs> trust me, when you come to the event on Saturday, you're gonna get a taste of not just some good food because they cook too, but they got some singing sisters and brothers with them, and now you got a dance troupe too. Oh, I'm scared of you, yeah. girl. Oh my goodness, <laughs> I am so scared. <laughs> So, but it's a fun day. It's a, a blessed day when we give back as the arms of love, AOL. See, y'all think of that other AOL. No, this is the real AOL right here. The Arms of Love Community Outreach, Inc. Remember it. They have been in existence for seven years. City council members, state representatives have acknowledged this group with proclamations and their appearance. They might, in fact, you probably have a few of them at the event on Saturday because they make sure it's a, this is a political out talk to these folks talk to Vera Lane talk to Candace talk to brother Edge brother Edge is is your husband and he is one of the hardest working brothers in all of Queens okay absolutely you the know? community layers on you can bet that some of the politicians will be there yes if indeed. he has anything to do with that's it. right <laughs> and he will put you to work if you're not working so you better be careful yes, don't will. come out there thinking you're gonna play <laughs> that's right everyone has a part in this place in this party to do it's just and that's why batteries are not included because we're real we don't need no batteries exactly. we got the real deal <laughs> all right that's right <laughs> so fair lane i got some more history you ready for it Check sure. this out. All right, the date. It's a Thursday. It's, no, it's September the 6th, 1883. Joel Augustus Rogers was born on this date in 1883. Now, he was an African-American writer, lecturer, anthropologist, historian, journalist, and publisher. Rogers was from Negril, Jamaica. That's right, Yaman, where his father was a small town school teacher. And in 1906, Rogers moved to Chicago, but spent most of his life in Harlem, New York. Rogers had known Marcus Garvey in Jamaica, and in 1917, he became a naturalized U.S. citizen. In 1923, he covered the Marcus Garvey trial. He wrote for the Universal Negro Improvement Association weekly newspaper, The Negro World. And he lectured to local UNIA chapters. Rogers was also researched the global history of African people. And in 1925, he went to Europe for research and analysis in their libraries and museums. In 1927, he returned to Europe for research and traveled to North Africa during that same period. Now, between 1935 and 1936, he researched in Egypt and Sudan. And at this time, he worked as a correspondent for the New York Amsterdam News. He attended the coronation of Haile Selassie, the first Rasta, the real Rasta, who presented him with the coronation medal. Now, for those of you who are not Jamaican, who are not Rasta, Haile Selassie, the first, if you don't know your history, he's the last in the line of Judah. That's right, the biblical Judah, the same family that produced the house of David. We're talking Haile Selassie, honored and revered as Rastaman. Yes, indeed. All right, Rogers' organizational affiliations included the Paris Society of Anthropology, the American Geographical Society, 
the American Association for the Advancement of Science and the Academy of Political Science. For 50 years, Rogers investigated and reported the accomplishments of ancient and contemporary African people, contributing to such publications as The Crisis, which is American Mercury, The Messenger, The Negro World, Pittsburgh Courier, and Survey Graphic. When publishing houses refused to publish his works, Rogers published them himself. Rogers was the first black war correspondent. He became a scholar, unparalleled in assembling information about African people and publicly, and probably did more to popularize African history than any single writer of the 20th century. Rogers wrote and published at least 16 books and pamphlets covering the entire spectrum of the global African community, from ancient and modern Africa to Asia, Australia, and South Pacific, Europe, and the Western Hemisphere. His most acclaimed works are from Superman to Man. His first book, published in 1917, 100 Amazing Facts About the Negro, The Real Facts About Ethiopia, Sex and Race, Nature Knows No Color Line, and The World's Great Men of Color. Joel Augustus Rogers died in 1966. I got to take a break here, but I know y'all didn't know that name. See, that's what we're doing, connecting the dots. I got another caller on the line. Hold on, caller. I'm going to come back to you in just a minute, right after these very important messages. Come on. You're listening to content developed by the GoPro Radio Network, the fastest growing network in the galaxy. GoPro Radio Network. Listen to the voices in your head. Why are you paying for radio? Are you serious? GoPro Radio offers content for free. Go to www.goproradio.com and listen to original, irreverent, and exceptional talk shows. It's free. Go to www.goproradio.com now. It's that simple and free. www.goproradio.com. Listen to the voices in your head. Oh, and did I mention they, it's free? They left? Okay. What if you- You're listening to content developed by the GoPro Radio Network, the fastest growing network in the galaxy. GoPro Radio Network. Listen to the voices in your head. Right already. We're back. Are you ready for this? Absolutely. On the GoPro Radio, the BCS Experience, yeah. I got my really dear friend, Viraline Edge. She's the president and CEO of Arms of Love Outreach yeah. Community Incorporated, holding their seventh anniversary event of wellness back to school. No batteries included this coming Saturday in Queens, Jamaica, Queens. Uh, we got. She'll, I'll have her tell you more about the information in a second. We lost that call of Veer Lane, but that's okay. I got you on the line. I'm so happy that you're a part of the BCS experience. Um, Veer Lane, are happy you learning? Well, thank you, my dear. Are you learning anything this evening that you didn't know? See, this is part of what we got to do here. We and kind of notice how I connect the dots of these very important people to education. Right, and, and that's exactly what we're trying to exactly. do. That we're trying to meet them where they are because they don't want to hear um, history the way we have to give it to them. So right. We have to break it to them to make it relevant. That's exactly. And this right. certainly is information that I can break down and make it relevant for them. I'm going to send you a link to the show after we finish because we archive all of our shows so that you can download it and then use it as a teaching tool. Show it and play it because we, the link will also show you the live streaming part of this. I have audio right. as well as visual uh, the tools that go along with so that people can see the pictures of these uh, of these men and women who are our heroes and sheroes. All right, I'm gonna, mm -hmm. I got a couple more to give to you before we come back to let you finish out with Arms of Love. Okay, check this out. It's the date. Ah, oh, hmm, yes. It's a Wednesday. It's September the 2nd. The year is 1896. Amanda Randolph was born on this date in 1896. Now, she was an African-American actress. Born in Louisville, Kentucky, 
She and her younger sister, Lillian, were successful stage and film performers. Now, her film and TV credits include, now you, you've seen her, but you may not recognize that name, Verlaine. Her film and TV credits include The Black Network. That was 1936, mm -hmm. you were, weren't born yet. But she played as Mezzanine Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> Jail Matron, Swing of 1939 as Liza Freeman, Comes Midnight, 1940, Lying Lips, 1939. Now, this is where you probably recognize the name Amanda Randolph. She was in Amos and Andy, 1951, the TV series as Sapphire's Mama. Ho, ho, ho. No way out. I wasn't born then. No, you no weren't way. born then either. Oh, I'm the old no. guy on this set. But, but you, I, I know Amos and Andy. That's, that's right. It. And you remember Sapphire's mama. Well, that's who Sapphire's yes. mama was. Okay. Okay. <laughs> now, she's working. Another film was she was working her way through college, 1952, um, as Maybelle in Bamba and the Jungle Girl, 1952, as Lenasi. A Man Called Peter, 1955, as Willie, Make Room for Daddy, TV series. Yes, she did TV too, 1953 to 1964. That's when you were born, somewhere back in there. And as Louise... Absolutely not. <laughs> I'm still too old. The Children's Hour, 1953, and The Danny Thomas Show, 1957. Okay, Amanda Randolph died of a stroke on August the 24th, 1967, in Duarte, California. She was a wonderful, great actress, good comed comedic timing, and it's a shame because she really opened the door for all of those actresses of today. All right, the date. It's a Wednesday. It's September the 2nd. The year is 1896. Now, you see, Edith Wilson was born on this date, 1936. She was an African-American blues singer. Now, you don't know nothing about no blues. Real age? No. No, okay. No. Okay. <laughs> Born Edith Goodall, she came from a middle class black family in Louisville, Kentucky. After deciding on a career in show business and marrying pianist Danny Wilson, she performed in Chicago, Washington, D.C., and New York before accepting recording contract from Columbia Records in 1921. Those are the black swan days, the records way, way back there. Backed by Johnny Dunn and the original Jazz Hounds, Wilson cut Nervous Blues, Vamp and Liza Jane, and other songs, most of which were compares, uh, composed or arranged by Perry Bradford. Okay, time is running short. I'm going to jump ahead because I really want to get to this last part. Okay, Martin D. Jenkins, born Sunday, September the 4th, 1904. Now, he was an African-American educator and administrator known for his pioneering work in the field of education. See folks, we're connecting the dots about education. It is so critically important that these kids get off to the right start. And I guarantee you this, if they don't know our history as African Americans and the diaspora, if they're not getting any of this information in school, it is no wonder they end up in Rikers Island on a fast track as they say, from school in the pipeline to the prison system. We gotta keep them out of that system, folks. And the way you're gonna do that is to make sure they know the richness of our cultural heroes and sheroes. Like this gentleman who dedicated his life, Martin D. Jenkins. He was a protege of Booker T. Washington, okay? We're not talking about any lottie dotty anybody off the block. These are people who succeeded through thick and thin who didn't have more, probably less than what you have today. But look where they ended up succeeding in life. All right, I got to move forward because we got about four or five minutes left of airtime because his story is long, but I tell you, check it out now. All right, we're going to let Beer Lane end the show, but I got to play this next piece. It's only two, three, two minutes and 45 seconds, guys. I want you to hear this. My people know this truth and never forget it especially when you celebrate the 4th of July, American Independence Day, or when you hear the national anthem or Pledge of Allegiance. Wake up, stop fantasizing, and recognize the truths hidden in forced or subliminal patriotism. See, your lives and your freedom will depend upon your comprehension of the truth and that which is 
deceitfully hidden from you. Listen to this next piece right here. Play that tape. What to the American slave is your 4th of July? I answer, a day that reveals to him more than all other days of the year the gross injustice and cruelty to which he is a constant victim. To him, your celebration is a sham. Your boasted liberty, an unholy license, your national greatness, swelling vanity. Your sounds of rejoicing are empty and heartless. Your denunciation of tyrants, brass-fronted impudence. Your shouts of liberty and equality, hollow mockery. Your prayers and hymns, your sermons and thanksgivings, with all your religious parade and solemnity, are to him mere bombast, fraud, deception, impiety, and hypocrisy, a thin veil to cover up crimes that would it, that would disgrace a nation of savages. There's not a nation of the earth guilty of practices more shocking and bloody than are the people of these United States at this very hour. At a time like this, scorching irony, not convincing argument, is needed. Oh, had I the ability and could reach the nation's ear, I would today pour forth a stream, a fiery stream of fighting ridicule, blasting reproach, withering sarcasm, and stern rebuke. For it is not light that is needed, but fire. It is not the gentle shower, but thunder. We need the storm, the whirlwind, the earthquake. The feeling of the nation must be quickened. The conscience of the nation must be roused. The propriety of the nation must be startled. The hypocrisy of the nation must be exposed. And the crimes against God and man must be proclaimed and denounced. This is a piece of history that used to be recited annually. Now, the voice that you heard, and it's a video, and I'm, I'm, I really want you to take this and show this and share it with... Eighteen sixty three, sixty four, sixty five. He and we usually annually. This was re, this was recited in our black schools and churches. His speech. That's awesome. Isn't that awesome? And how how apropos for today, still resonates. Mm -hmm. So that's why we are ending this show with the Arms of Love Outreach Community. And I want to say thank you, Vera Lane and family, for bringing me in. Tell them about what's going to happen on Saturday, September the 10th from 12 to 3 p.m. Location, time, and address, and phone number. Go ahead, Vera Lane. On Saturday, September 10th, we will be hosting our first seconds. school event. And at this event, you will have fun-filled games, fresh refreshments, Plenty of um, dancing, singing, activities for the children, and everyone will leave there with a book bag full of school supplies. And for more information, you can either like us on Facebook at the Arms of Love Community Outreach, or you can contact us at 646-770-2386. 60 seconds. And someone will get back to you with any answers, any answered questions that you would have, would need. All right. There you heard it from the CEO, President, Verlaine Edge. Verlaine, thank you and congratulations for doing what you do and bringing us all together as the village to assist in bringing our village 
the change it needs. Thank you very much for having me. Oh, many times. This is just the beginning. We're going to have you come back. (laughs) All right? (laughs) Folks, this is the BCS Experience (laughs) on GoPro Radio Network. I want to thank my producer, Tylon Eusebio Washington, uh, my line engineer, Mel, Mel... Alsap, thank you so very much. The music that you're listening to is from Julian Andrew Myers and Mike Sargent, uh, the Jazz Lounge Project. Ten seconds. So listen, folks, I'll be back next week for the BCS Experience. It's been all about the BCS Experience. Join me next Wednesday when my special guest will be you, my listening audience. Hi. Until then, I'm out of here for the moment. Peace and love always. You're listening to content developed by the GoPro Radio Network, the fastest growing network in the galaxy. GoPro Radio Network, listen to the voices in your head.